everybody, it's Matt from Eastwood Company, and we're here for our next live stream. We're, today we're going to talk about brakes. But before we start, just a couple little technical things that we found in the last live stream. Make sure your computer is updated to the newest Flash version on it. And also, if you have availability to Chrome or Firefox, try and use that. It seems to work better for the live feed. So with that out of the way, we're going to start and talk about brakes. So when you're driving a car, you're probably just pushing your pedal and just the car stops. You don't think about what happens. Well, when you work your brake system, you're pushing the pedal, which is pushing, pushing the piston inside of your master cylinder here like this, which then sends the fluid to all four corners. Pretty simple. Well, that system is under a lot of pressure. It's a really high pressure. And basically, there's fittings that are used in these brake lines that keep an air and fluid tight seal. So if you have a brake line like this and it has a bad seal, you're going to allow air in or fluid out, which is going to cause a, a mushy or soft pedal, or you know it's going to grab really well. So today we're going to show you how to make nice, clean brake lines and how to avoid making bad brake lines so that you have a safe car to drive. Because everybody's hopping their car up, you need to stop as well as you go. So now that we've shown you kind of the basics of how a brake system works, we're going to talk about the uh, the different types of the different types of flares. So. Basic automotive flares or fittings are all like a 45 degree fitting that you'll find. So pretty much all the different styles we're talking about, the, uh, the fitting that's on the end that I showed you, it's at a 45 degree angle, that's how it seals. Now there is what's called AN fittings that you're starting to seal, see cross over into automotive use. And that's actually Army Navy, just like you know the, the AN stands for. So that's for Army Navy, that was originally adopted by the military because they wanted to separate themselves from the automotive market. So th those flanges or those flares are, uh, are much more secure. So you can't interchange them. That's a big thing I wanted to touch on is people are trying to interchange uh, an SAE double flare with like an AN fitting or something like that because they got the cool anodized fittings. No matter how cool it looks, they're not compatible. It's really dangerous to try and um, intermix them. So don't do that. So today we're going to talk about the three most common um, automotive flares. So we have right here kind of set up all the different types of flares. Um, and the first one that we're going to show you is the single flare. Now a single flare is just as it sounds. You're just flaring the, the brake line and it's putting it out and making a single flare like that, just a, an outward flange. Now this flange is, this flare is really only good for low pressure. This is for like carbureted fuel system or something like that. It's all it's really good for. You can't be using this for brake lines. So again, you don't want to interchange this with what's supposed to be a double flare. So this brake line here, as you can see, has a single flare. Now right next to it, we have what's called, a, it's a SAE double flare. So this is a double flare where you have a single flare that's basically the edges are rolled inside of itself. You can see here. And I'll, I'll try and tilt this so you can kind of see the, uh, the difference between the two. So if you see just that rolled edge there, what that does is that actually gives some extra support. When you're tightening down these brake fittings, you're actually kind of crushing them a little bit when you're tightening them in, into the socket they sit in. So there's going to be like a male on these two, there's going to be like a male um, on the other end on the master cylinder or the brake, brake caliper or whatever. There's going to be a male end that fits in there and you're tightening the two of them together really, really tight. So if you have a single flare, you could see how it could just push this thin single wall it could just uh, you know, rip it apart or, or over flare it and cause a leak. So that's the difference between the two. And then the last one here is a bubble flare, which commonly is called a bubble flare. Um, there's a lot of discussion about the differences, but a bubble or uh, a metric bubble or ISO or DIN, uh, DIN flare, that's what this is. So this is found commonly on pretty much all European vehicles throughout time and about 88 or so and on uh, in the newer vehicles, even American cars started switching over these. So you're going to start seeing these even in, in the, uh, the more modern rides. So you're going to see this, uh, this double flare on older cars, you know, the hot rods, muscle cars, that kind of stuff. They all use this. But you got to remember that if you're starting to hop it up and you know, put newer parts, performance parts, you may run into where you need to learn how to make this flare and the differences between them. So again, they can't be interchanged. So now that you got the idea of what the different basic flares are, we're going to talk about the different tools to flare brake lines. So over here we have three of our most common or best-selling brake flaring tools. And we'll start with the cheapest 
all the way up to the most expensive and kind of give you the pros and cons of them, what's better, why you should have it or why you shouldn't, or, uh, you know, and you'll be able to fit, figure out what fits best for you. So the first one here we have is like what we kind of nickname like a wing nut style tool. So this is the one that you're going to see in like every auto parts store and get it anywhere. We sell a pretty uh, a higher quality version of this, but they range anywhere from like $20 all the way up to $50. Um, they all do the basic same thing. So it's a multiple pieces. So you have this part here that you have to, uh, you know, you fit these little dies into with the brake line. And then you got to slide this over top, turn the nut, the, uh, the nut down, and compress the line. So you got a bunch of different parts here you're trying to turn and move and, you know, make them all work. It can be a bit clumsy. Um, these can make, you know, the single and double flares, but uh, it takes a lot of practice to get a good flare with these. Um, no matter how many times you do brake ones, I think everybody's, even the pros, are kind of second guessing themselves when they use these because uh, I'm sure a lot of you have the same problem where, you know, I made a brake line with one of these, go to put it on the car and then it leaks because it has a little, you know, it wasn't flared completely square or something like that. These, these are kind of tough to use. They do the job, but you can use them under the car, but they are pretty difficult to use. So that's that one. The next one here we have is probably my favorite is the Eastwood Pro Professional brake flaring tool. So this is it without the handle, of course. Um, it's a display one we have here. It's pretty much, it's made up in this. Everything you need, you know, with the handle is right in here. I got one of the dies already inserted. So we have, uh, you know, the dies here. So basically with this, you now have just a moving head. So there's a head here that moves and spins, and that's where you change your different types of um, different types of settings for different flares. And you can change your dies out for the different size as well. So really simple, there's a, there's a part that swings open, and we're gonna show you kind of how this one works a little later, because it is really simple to use. Uh, but this one, the pros, it's uh, like I said, really easy to use. You can make flares without much effort. A lot of guys are just pulling this out of the box, making a flare perfect the first time. They're barely even reading the instructions. They're so good, at, you know, it's so easy to use. So with this one, that, that's the pros. Now the one downside to this particular one is that it does have to be mounted in the vise. So you have to mount this in the vise. It has to be fixed in there because you're pulling on that handle. Um, I've done it under the car, but it's really clumsy. I wouldn't really suggest it unless you're in a, a real pinch. Um, it will work that way, but it really works best in the vise, you know. So you, if you're doing something under the car, this one's not quite as good. So that's, that's the first, the, uh, the second one. Now the third one we have here, we get this out of the way, um, we have is a hydraulic. This is, a, this is one that a lot of similar styles are being sold by a lot of the tool truck guys that are driving around. Um, pretty expensive, they can range anywhere from three, four, five hundred dollars for, for one of these. Now this set is nice for one, one big reason, it's hydraulic. So this one, it's as simple as just squeezing this trigger here and it's gonna move the piston and you can flare a line. Really, really easy, you just, you know, you, you close the valve, compress it, and that's it, and you go. You just put your different dies in. So it's good for that reason, but there's also a catch-22 there. You don't really feel much resistance. So when you're using this, and I've had this problem myself when using these, is that I'm just squeezing away and you don't think about it, and you go to do those one or two couple extra squeezes, and you actually can overflare the line. It's really easy to do. So you kind of got to get the, uh, you, you got to know what to look for and, and actually kind of get a feel for it, how many times you're going to have to compress this to get a good flare. So that, that's one downside. Uh, as far as mounting goes, this particular one, you can mount it in the vise with the knurled section here. Or you can actually do it under the car because, like I said, you can kind of hold it in one hand, squeeze, it, squeeze the trigger, and go. So it's, it's pretty movable. This one, another nice feature is it does do, um, it's tough to see here, we have all the different dies, but this one actually does the push to connect fittings, like the GM fuel fittings. You can actually make those flares with this as well. It comes with the dies. So that, that's pretty cool, but it does come with a price. So now that we've shown you the couple different types of flaring tools and the basic flares, we're gonna show you basically how to make different types of flares um, that we talked about and show you the, what you, do not want to do along the way because there's a lot of things you can do that are really simple to make flaring a brake line go a lot smoother and you don't have to do multiple tries when you're flaring a line. So the first one that, I, that we're going to cover here and we're going to go back to this little display we have so it's easy to zoom on. Um, we're going to talk about cutting your lines. Now something that guys do is they cut their lines with like a hacksaw 
or a cutoff grinder or something like that. They're cutting the lines really uneven. You can kind of see here, I, I did this one just kind of haphazardly with a hacksaw. Um, just cleaned it, it's got a jagged edge. It's, it's just not, it's not a good start. And even if you try and file it down or grind it down, it's really tough to get a nice square cut. And that's probably the number one most important thing when making a brake line is that you need to have, you need to start with a square straight cut and a smooth um, surface that you're flaring on. So any, any rough edges or debris that's left on there, that's going to cause a line to be flared and be really, really, really ugly or just an, uh, an unsafe flare. So when you're cutting the lines, what I like to use is we, is we, uh, we have, here's two that we have here. Um, this is the most common. It's just a, a tubing cutter you can get at like a hardware store, you know, anywhere like that, you know, Home Depot, those types of things, plumbing supply store. They sell ones like this, really easy to use. And, you know, this one here comes, which is pretty cool, comes with a little reamer. So we've used the heck out of this one. This is just a cheapo one we got at the store down the street. Um, and it cuts lines straight. Just make sure that your wheel, after, over time, they will wear, wear out. Make sure that your wheel is nice and, uh, you know, round and also sharp. And then the other one I have here is a little ratcheting jobber. So this one here, you can kind of ratchet. And it really makes it easy to do under the car. Because um, this one, you can kind of just hold it and do it almost one-handed. So you just tighten the knob, ratchet as you go. So those are the tubing cutters. Make sure you get one of these. These are, these are really important. This is definitely something that you need to have. Don't just try and use a hacksaw or a cutoff grinder. It's, it's not going to end well. It's going to make unsafe lines. So now that we have these, uh, you know, the unsafe ones here that we kind of showed you, you can see that next to these two here, I have two that I actually flared. So I left them cut, kind of how you saw in the beginning. I made two flares. So this one here is a single flare, and this is like a bubble flare that I made, or a ISO, metric ISO flare. So you can see on this one, it's kind of it's kind of got mushroom. It's not flared evenly, so it's it's unflared in some parts, overflared at others. This one here, um, I can try and turn it a little bit. It's got a kind of a rough edge. So that's all that rough cut edge or debris is all right around the ceiling area now. So when you go to put that in there and seal it down, that's not going to be a good um, contact area, and that's going to cause a leak over time. That's going to just start seeping out around your brake fittings, and eventually you'll start sucking air and uh, you know, cause a bad, a bad um, a mushy pedal. So the next one here we're going to move over to is overflared lines. So this is more of a technique thing. Um, this is especially can happen with the double flare, um, the wing nut style tool that we talked about. This is where you're over flaring a line. You're actually taking it past its point of, um, you know, stretching the metal further than it can go, or there's too much material and it can't move it inside the die. So this first one I have here, um, basically is a, uh, this is a double flare that I made, and I, fl I let too much of the brake line stick out from the die. So it stuck out, too, it stuck out too far, and basically the material didn't have anywhere to go. So um, hopefully in the close-up you can see it kind of mushroomed it over funny and that, that got distorted here on the corner. And then this one's a lot easier to see with the single flare. It just straight ripped it. So the, there was just not enough material here and it just ripped it open because we were trying to stretch it too far. So when you're doing your, your flares, make sure you have your brake line um, fitted exactly as this, how it says in the instructions in the die to get it, to get it correct. So the flip side here is next to that is an underflared line. So this is the exact opposite, just as you would think. This is where you took your brake lines and you didn't have the brake lines seated far enough out in the die so it didn't actually flare it enough. So this one, this, I really did an extreme one here. You can see it's barely even flared at all. And the one next to it's almost flared with a, with a uh, ISO or bubble flare. Um, it's, not, it's not fully flared all the way. So, this is where it wasn't sticking out far enough, and really, it's not correct to try and put this back in and try and flare it again a second time, because you're probably not going to get an even flare. It's best to cut that end off, do another flare, you know, throw that piece away and start over. So now that we showed you the different do's and don'ts for the brake line, um, I'm going to show you basically a process of making a couple flares. So I'm going to make a single flare, a double flare, and then I'll make a, a, a bubble or ISO flare, metric flare for you. Um, on this tool. So we have the one over here that I talked about. So I'll, we're going to step you through the, the different steps. So start with the one line we have here. Now, when you cut these lines like I was talking about and uh, you know, making sure they're clean, 
We have a, an aerosol injection cleaner that I've been using quite a bit that's really nice. Um, basically with this, you just stick it in the brake line and you just pull the trigger. I'm not going to do it here because I want to squirt the camera guy, but you, uh, you, know, you squirt, squeeze the trigger. That's going to blast pressurized cleaner through the brake line while all the debris that's in there. So even if you have brand new brake line, if you bought a kit or you bought one of the prefab kits or something you know, out there, they still are cut at the factory. And a lot of times there's burrs and debris and cutting oil that are inside of this that's not good to be floating around your lines. So you always want to spray it out with this after you've deburred everything and reamed it out. So after you've done that, the next thing you want to do is we have uh, also, not to pitch another aerosol injection product, but this is really good use for it. I, I just do this all the time. I just have a little cup and I take your aerosol injected lubricant um, and I just spray a little bit in, the, in the, the cup here. Now the idea with this is, is you, you take your brake line and you stick it in the end here. You stick the end in the lubricant. So the idea is that you're lubing the end of the brake line and this is going to help it flare a lot easier. So especially, especially if you're doing like stainless steel or something like that that flares even more difficult. Um, even, even just the standard steel ones, they, they don't flare. Um, it's not an easy process if you're, if you're doing, especially with the wingnut style ones, you need, need all the help you can get. So after you've lubed the end of it, um, what you want to do then is, I, like we're going to show you again on this one here. Um, this is the die that I was talking about. So you want to take your brake line and for doing this flare, we suggest the, uh, with a double flare that you have the brake line basically flush with the end here. So you're going to want to have it like basically just right there with the edge of the, of the die. So with this tool, we kind of have a fail safe um, step in it that you don't have to think quite as much. So we have a, um, I have this other one here. I'm going to actually show you a couple of these just to make it a little easier. We have a operation zero on this tool. And this is actually a flat head that's on there. And that actually sets your distance. So with this, you can pull the handle, you can move the lever, and, it, and it'll basically contact and make it flush. So you don't have to worry quite as much as with some of the other tools to, uh, to how much stick out you have or if it's, if it's not sticking out far enough, etc. Pull the trigger, makes it flush, tighten everything down. So I just wanted to show you that from this angle. Since I'm going to be doing it in the vise, I, I want to show you here so you can get an idea. So now they have that. You flip the lever over here that we have. There's a pin that you stick in. And uh, before I make it really tight, I do the operation zero, this top pin here. I do the operation zero. So I'm going to pull the, the uh, handle here. And that's going to go flush. So now that we got everything flush with the edge here, just kind of show you guys in case anybody misses it. So you just do that action there. You don't have to go real tight, you're just trying to flush it up. So you do that, and you tighten this wing nut down here. And a key with this that we've come across, and with any of these tools, you don't need to go crazy with tightening down on the die. You can actually split this die here, it's like a cast part, and you can actually split that by putting too much pres pressure on it. So just make it snug. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You don't have to go crazy. So now we've done that. I'm going to show you on, on this one again here. Hopefully you can see. Um, we're doing it. I'm going to show you a double flare first. So we'll show you the process for a double flare. So for the double flare, you're going to go, you're going to switch the head here. We're using 3 16 brake line. I figure that's probably one of the most common. And it's operation one. So this is the first step. So you're going to spin your head like that, get it in line with where our brake line's coming through, and then we'll pull the handle and make the first flare. So you go to the operation one. So now I'll do that one real quick. So I'll turn the head here. Operation one, everything's tight. So now you can see basically the, the process with this one. And that was really it. That quick. You just have a little bit of resistance. You get to a point where it stops. You don't need to go crazy. Some of you guys out there are a lot bigger and stronger than I am, so you probably don't even realize your strength. You just pull on it. You feel a little resistance, then like that, it stops. That's it. So once you feel that stop, don't go crazy. Don't go over tighten it. You can actually bend or break the tool, or you can over flare the line, and it's just going to make a bad line in the end. So now that we did that one, I'll show you this one again. We'll kind of put the same spot. And you're going to turn it here to the operation two. 
It's a 3 16 line. This one actually shares 3 16 and quarter inch. So you flip it there like that and you're ready to go. So we'll show you a, a single flare later, but to, to save zooming in and out, this is the one you're going to actually use for a, a single flare. So if you want to just do a single flare for, like I said, for a fuel line or something like that, you just skip to this one here and you only do the single flare on this one. So when you pull the handle, you can do just a single flare and that's it. So I'll show you that one in a bit, but that way you get an idea as far as where the head placement needs to, be go, needs to go. So now that we've done that, now we're ready to make the rest of the double flare. So quick, got to turn this before I forget. So we're on our Operation 2 3 16 So we're going to pull the handle, resistance, resistance, stop. I felt the stop right there, and that's it. So you don't want to go really any further. So now they've done that, that's pretty much it. So we made a double flare that, that easy. So I, I'm talking and doing this. Obviously, if you're doing this at home after a couple of these, you can start banging them out real quick. So we loosen the uh, T handle here, pull the pin out, flip it up. And uh, I like to just give it a little wiggle. You can give it a little tap, whatever. Pull it and uh, clean some of the debris off here. And I'll show you the, uh, this one. So that's a double flare I just made right in front of you guys. Really simple. So you can see the, how it's flared over. So now that we got that one done, that was the double flare. So that's the one that's most common. I saw people already on Facebook asking about how to do that flare. That's how easy it is with this tool. You can really see how it saves time and money. Um, you know, there really isn't that much skill to it if you do those couple of things. So now I'm going to show you how to do the single flare. Um, so again, I'm going to dip it into the, uh, in a little bit of the aerosol injection lubricant that I have sitting here. Use the same dies, the 3 16 dive, the 45 degree uh, marking on it. Put it back in here. Set it in like that. There, I'll just tighten the handle down. So we're already on the Operation 2 here that I showed you. So we're going to stay right there on that to, to do a single flare. So that's all you need to do for this. Let me just make sure this is all, there we go, everything's squared up. So for that one, this one is, uh, again, since it's a single flare, there's not a lot of resistance to make this flare. So that, that was it. Just that easy, just like that. Now this one's really easy to over flare. So it feels like there's still some more tension. If I really put some, some pressure on it, I could flare this thing more and probably split it. And uh, hopefully that little tweak I did there at the end didn't do that. It's just as easy as that. Just tweak it a little bit, second guess it, and you could split it open. So I'll give it a little wiggle. And uh, there we go. So there's a, there's a single flare I just made for you guys. So because it is a single flare and it's just flaring out once, really, really easy to, to rip it and break it like we showed down uh, in the beginning down below. Uh, to split that open. So if, if I did that little extra pull at the end, it's going to flare just enough that you're going to have too much and it's going to rip the material. So that's your single flare. Now the last flare I'm going to show you then here is the bubble flare or um, ISO, DIN. It's a metric type flare. Again, it's found on uh, pretty much all European vehicles and more modern vehicles it's, it's found on. This particular flare it's really, really similar. Basically, you're making almost the same thing when you're doing a double flare. The first step is almost creating a bubble flare. It's really, really similar. Um, but on these, there is a difference. And I don't know if you're going to be able to, to see here in this, but I'm going to try and flip it. This is something I actually kind of noticed earlier that I wanted to show you guys, the two of these. Now, this one here on the, on the outside, that's, the, uh, that's a true metric like ISO or DIN bubble flare. And this one here is the, uh, is the met, or I'm sorry, is the, uh, the double flare, the SAE. So there is a little difference here in the actual, the seat there. So there is a small difference when you're making that flare. And we have, it, we have separate sides of the dies that are specifically for that. So you want to flip over. There's, a, there's actually a DIN and a 4.75. Uh, marking on this particular one here. So I'll put that in there. So you want to flip that over. So all of our dies in this particular tool, 
you can flip them over on either side. So one side's for SAE, the other side's for the metric. So just as easy as flipping them over like that. So make sure you have the, uh, the side that you want facing in towards the head. So I have the metric side that says DIN on it, flip towards there. Just make sure we got that dipped again. So you're gonna stick that one in there. Like I mentioned, I'm gonna let a little bit of a uh, stick out here and then I'll uh, let the tool kind of do the, do the work for me as far as eyeballing it goes. So do that, pull the handle, and just like that. So now we're pretty much tighten this down, snug. Now we're ready to do the bubble flare. Now on this tool here, I'm gonna show you, same thing, there's actually a setting for operation one, 4.75 or DIN, that's the metric bubble flare. So that's the ISO flare is what the, uh, you know, the correct terminology for it. But that's what everybody calls a bubble flare. So you want to flip to that one right there, turn your head to that. So I'm going to turn that here to that one. Got everything tightened down. Pull the handle just like that. And this one goes a little bit further, but you feel it stop. You feel the resistance stop. So now we did that. Just as easy as that, real easy. Take it out. Try and clean off some of the, that's your uh, bubble flare there. So that was a really quick, um, really quick to make the brake lines. Um, so if you're doing a bunch of these flares, like I said, when you're using that tool, it, it makes it pretty simple. I've used the other ones in a pinch, but that's, that's the tool that I keep in my garage. So now that we got that one, you saw that, um, we're going to basically show you um, some forming. So now that we covered that, I'll show you a little bit of forming here um, on forming brake lines. This one's a little quicker and um, you know, a little less to, to discuss. So with brake line forming, um, you obviously want a brake line that is formed in a uniform fashion. So with the brake line, you want it to be formed, um, the bends, things like that. You want them to be formed so there's no kinks. You don't want any major kinks in your lines. So a lot of times guys are using their hands to try and fold things over them or they're just you know, bending them. They're putting kinks in the line. So you can actually put a kink in a line, it's gonna reduce the flow there. And if it's bad enough, you know, it can actually stop the fluid from going through. So this is one I kind of just, um, just made up. I showed a couple bends with this tool here. So we have our tubing bender. It's the Eastwood uh, tubing bender we offer. It can do from quarter inch all the way up um, on this one, all the way up to three eighths. So with this one, it's pretty pretty simple um, idea. We can put the lever up like that, put the handle down. It's a two-handed process. So like that, and then you're going to just bend. I'm doing it really quick, so you're going to want to obviously measure. So. You just bend around like that. There's a degree gauge on the front, front, which is pretty hard to see, and there's also like a viewpoint where you can put marks on the brake line to kind of make sure that you hit your bends where you need them to be. So if you're, if you're one of those guys that's doing an exact restoration where you want all the lines to be just how they were from the factory, you're gonna need to mark that to get everything correct. Or if you're just doing custom work where everything's tight quarters, you use that little uh, eyesight area there, mark it with a marker, and then you know um, where you need to bend. So that, that's making that bend there. And that's a that's really quick, easy way to make, uh, to make bends. Now, now that we've shown you that, another tool that we have that's really handy is our, our forming pliers. This one that's, that's so cheap and so helpful that everybody needs it in their toolbox. I, I always have a couple of these laying around for when I'm doing brake line jobs. So the idea with this it's basically if you're doing like a wheel cylinder, that's, that's the biggest thing i found is like when I'm doing wheel cylinders, it always seems like I can't get the fitting to start just right because it's got a little tweak on the end of it that it needs to get the, the fitting started um, without like uh, running any of the threads out. So with this, you can basically just tweak it just a little bit. So this isn't made to, to do like real tight bends or anything, but you can just tweak a line and it's loose. So it's actually loose on there, so it's not kinking it like it would if you were using vice grips or side cutters, something like that. It's actually got a groove cut in it for the different sizes of tubing, and it's, uh, it's also got a groove 
cut in the face here. So with those grooves there, you can kind of just form the tubing, the brake line or fuel line right around it. So you can see I just made a little, a quick little bend in this one here. But that's basically what you need to do. So this, this tool is really, really handy for doing that, that kind of work. And again, they're so cheap, you can just throw them in your toolbox. And we, we sell a kit that's the, the tubing bender and the forming tool together in a little kit. So that's pretty much to make brake lines between this flaring tool and those things, you have pretty much everything you need. Now, there's instances where you don't have these around, or you're working under the car and you, know, you have tight quarters and you can't use this, this forming tool. You might need to get creative. So a couple little tips I wanted to show you that I've used on forming brake lines. You pretty much use anything that's round and solid that's, that's uh, laying around the shop. So I got a couple things here. You can use like a can. This is just a random can we have. This is a good round diameter that you can use to, to bend the tubing around it. If you're doing smaller stuff, you can do like a socket or something like this. So you can match your radius with what you need with whatever you have laying around. So another thing I like to keep around is just some random pieces of, of tubing, you know, different shapes, diameters. It's really good for when you're doing um, sheet metal fabrication and things like that where you're forming metal, but it's also really good for brake lines like this. So you can take a piece of brake line like this I'll show you here. And you can just carefully roll it like that. And man, we can make a nice wide radius like that that's like perfect. It didn't kink the line at all. That easy. So you just do that with each different thing. It's obviously with a, with a socket or something, it's a little more difficult. But yeah, you can make a really nice line, uh, bending a line by using any of this simple stuff like that laying around. Now the last little tip that I have for you guys that I use um, that's not really a tool is you can use, I use TIG wire. I keep TIG wire around. It's really good, again, for doing fabrication and sheet metal and body work. You can set your lines, but it's also really good for brake lines. So if you're doing br custom brake lines on a car or say you just you have to walk back and forth between the bench, you can have a piece of TIG wire and you basically just match your profile on the car. So it acts a lot like the, uh, like the brake line would. You know, it's, it's, flexible, but it's a little easier to bend. So you can kind of just, you know, I'll show you this, if you had the same thing, you can kind of just easily bend it on this and then turn it and bend, you know, another little bend. So you got your form there. So you then just take that right to your brake line, match it up, make your bends, and you have a form that you can lay on a table and you can keep checking your work as you go to make sure it's correct. So then when you go to put it on the vehicle, it's right. You don't have to worry about second guessing yourself. So keep this or a coat hanger kind of works, but they don't bend as nice. TIG wire works really nice, just the, the standard steel TIG wire. Um, even some thick MIG wire might work, but that's a little flexible. So this is my preferred choice. So last couple of things I have here before we do a little Q&A at the end. A um, couple of things that, we, uh, that I like to do while I'm in there, or uh, one thing I like to do while, while, while you're in there, is we have a brake gray. So we have a, a brake gray spray that actually you spray on your master cylinder, you can spray it on calipers, really anything that may come in contact with brake fluid. I know any time that I'm bleeding brakes, I end up spilling fluid somehow. No matter how careful I am, I end up spilling fluid, and it gets all over the master cylinder, it gets on the, the uh, brake caliper something, and it eats the paint off. Even those new brake calipers that you got, the coating that they put on them from the factory, usually 99% of the time, is not brake fluid resistant. So as soon as brake fluid touches that, it's going to start bubbling and eating it up. So with this brake fluid, or uh, I'm sorry, brake gray, it's resistant, really highly resistant to brake fluid. So we did a video, if you have our YouTube channel, if you check it out, or if you go to this, the product page for this, just search it on the website. We have a video that we did where we actually submerged a master cylinder that I sprayed with the brake gray in brake fluid for like a day or two at a time. Just left it submerged, we went home, came back, and we tested it and rubbed our fingers over the, over the master cylinder where we sprayed it, and it did not take the coating off. It wasn't bubbled, it stayed there. And you can just spray it off, wipe it off, and it was fine. So it's really cool stuff. This is one of my favorite coatings that we offer. So when you're bleeding the brakes, the last thing here, um, you may not have your wife, your kids, whoever, your neighbors around to pump the pedal. Everybody hates doing that job. That's why we, we started offering this tool here. So we have an Eastwood brake bleeder that's really good. It's a one-handed operation. You can just pull the trigger, bleed your brakes. So it also has, you can do vacuum or suction with it, um, pressure or, or vacuum with it, um, to basically 
weed your brakes so you can pull the fluid out, or you can even stick it in the master cylinder and you know, force the air back out the other way. So this is a cool tool to have. Again, pretty inexpensive, a good one to have around if you're just trying to get the fluid up to the master cylinder, whatever. It's, it's good to have around, pretty cheap and, ineffect, er, cheap and effective and inexpensive. So now that we covered all of that, that's just the basics of everything we kind of breeze through. There's a million things you can cover on brake wines and, and flaring brakes um, that we'd have you here for two hours, you'd probably be falling asleep if you're not already. So uh, we have a little bit of Q&A time. So if anybody's got any questions, feel free to ask them. If there's any that I miss at the end or we run out of time for, we're going to put up, like we did for a welding live demo, we're going to put up a little blog page with answers to all and any of the questions that we may have gotten. So anybody that's watching it can then view the questions afterwards uh, in case we've missed you or forgot you, or if for some reason I don't have the answer right in front of uh, the camera here. So what's the uh, first question we have? How does brake gray compare with powder coat and besides being less expensive? Break, so the question was how does the brake gray compare with powder coating other than being less expensive? Well powder coating isn't fully um, brake fluid resistant. Um, it is pretty darn tough. It's much better than your, your spray paint. But even that, over time, if you have extended um, exposure to brake fluid, it can start to bubble it up. It's a tough coating as far as powder coating is going to withstand more force. So if it's something that's dropped on it, rock chips, things like that, that's going to withstand better than this, than the brake gray. But as far as the brake fluid, um, how much it can withstand, this is definitely going to beat the powder coating there. That's about the only thing that really powder coating um, you know, doesn't fully hold up or beat you know, aerosol sprays with. But this one we worked really hard to get the chemical consistency right so that this thing can withstand you know, uh, just getting doused in brake fluid. So hopefully that answered that one. If you buy a coil of wine, how do you get it straight? A coil of wine, so the question is, um, I don't know if I, I don't think I have some, some easily handy, but we have a, you know, when you buy a coil of brake wine, you know, it comes in a big round coil, and how do you get it straight is the question. So if you're, if you're running it, um, if, you're, if you need a long piece, you know, I, what I do is I like to get it straight by hand, just, uh, you know, by rolling it out, and then you'll cut the piece you need, and then you're going to have it kind of une uneven. What I've done is I usually seem to not have the, you know, when I'm working on it, I might not have the tools laying around. I might grab like a, like a body hammer or something like that. You have a nice flat table and you just give it, you work out the, the, the flat spots. So you can hit tap on it and you can work out the flat spots as you go. So you can use the table to kind of check your flatness because it's really hard otherwise to do it by hand or with anything else to get it flat. Some guys here have been, have been working with trying to make a roller system so we can flatten them out. So if you guys could see a need for something like that, definitely hit us up. Our R&D guys have already been working on an idea for something that's just you basically roll it through to get brake line straight. Um, hit us up. You know, maybe we can get something going with that um, that they don't already have going. So that's a great question though. Any other uh, questions we got there? So the question was, any points about putting the flare, about putting the fitting on the flare before, before you're actually making the flare? And that's a good point. I didn't even get involved in any of that because I was trying to kind of breeze through everything, an, an overview. But when you have a, uh, again, I don't think I have any laying handy here. Oh yeah, we have this one here. Sorry. So we have this one here. So this is what the question is. So you have these, this flare, the flare you made and the fitting. You need to make sure that the threaded end here is what's going against the flare. So when you're making that flare, that's what's actually, when you're tightening it down, it's pushing that flare into the socket, into the, the opposing portion that's in the master cylinder, whatever. So you need to make sure you put this piece on first before you make it align. So obviously when you're making the first one, it's not as, the first flare, it's not as big of a deal because you can just slide it right off. But definitely, you know, before you make that second one, you got to put this, this piece on here first. So. That's, that's the last thing that, uh, that we have. So if anybody else has any questions, feel free to uh, you know, shoot us an email or post on the page. We will be hosting this page after this is over. You can go to the same landing page and you can view the recorded version of this right on there. And all the products that we talked about today, underneath the, the page that you're viewing right now, the, the player, 
We have all the products discounted right now. So if you guys want to grab a deal on anything we were talking about, even the expensive uh, flaring tools, the real professional ones, you can grab a deal on those because we have discounts on those. So thanks for watching. If you have any ideas for future technical live streams, feel free to shoot us a, an email or a, a message on Facebook or any of the other sites. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.